Hello, so this is part two of my review and discussion on The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. I recently read this and it is a new favorite book of mine. I think this whole series is going to be a favorite series of mine. Um, so this is part two. I'm going to be talking about specific things, spoilery information. Um, part one is just sort of an overview of certain thoughts and things that I generally liked about the book, but like not really going into specifics. So if you haven't read the book and you care about spoilers, then click off and come back when you have read the book. Um, yeah, I'm not going to hold this up the entire time, so I'm going to put this down now. And uh, basically, I'm going to, I have, I have my Goodreads review behind, behind the camera, um, because the way that I write my Goodreads reviews, I basically just type, like, as, I would be speaking, if that makes sense. So if it looks like I'm reading, I probably am, but I'm hoping that it'll come off genuine um, as well as it's just, I just, I need like those notes basically. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to go through, basically I'm just going to talk about the characters and then the things that involve the characters that I like and that I have, I basically have a lot of questions and a lot of hypotheses and I'm like a little all over the place. Like I'm, I'm very curious <laughs> to know if the interpretation that I have for uh, like a couple characters in particular is just like way off or if I'm like onto something. <laughs> so also I'm like less than a hundred pages into the Dream Thieves. So some of the things that I had questions on at the end of the Raven Boys, I like don't necessarily have questions on anymore or that like I have a bit more information. So here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna go through the characters and also, like, it's gonna include some plot stuff as well. So first, we, of course, we have to start off with Blue, who I actually, like, wanted more detail of, like, her style because everyone says that it's, it's, like, distinct, but to me, it wasn't something that I could picture as well in my mind. Like, I could picture her house really well. I kind of pictured it, like, the burrow from Harry Potter where, like, the inside almost seems like it's bigger than the outside and lots of, like, things made out of wood and just lots of rooms and people everywhere, um, which I, I liked that aspect. It gave it, like, a, a homey feeling, even though, um, it's almost, it just seems so busy also in there. But I do like the description of Blue's room because I think that descriptions of rooms or, like, when you go into someone's room, it really does sort of show who they are or who they, they want you to depending on how, like, meticulous they are, how they want you to perceive them. Um, but obviously Blue doesn't really have to worry about that. She's just like, this is my room, and that's what the description of the room would be. <laughs> it would be accurate to Blue's personality. In the beginning, I kind of had mixed feelings about Blue because I thought that she was, like, rude and unjust in the way that she was thinking about and treating the Raven boys. Like, she was just judging them solely based on, like, going to... Aglian B, which is that how you say their school name? <laughs> it seems like too many syllables, um, but that's what I'm going to call it. Yeah, but I think, I think when she meets Adam, she kind of realizes that she was being a little judgmental because I feel like they sort of have a connection for, for not having, like, for coming from families who don't have a lot of money or no, they're not considered, like, rich kids, um, as a lot of the Aglian B boys are known as. Yeah, so I think that she still sort of, like, recognizes, though, that she was being a little judgmental in the beginning, or that she had the wrong opinion of them. And, of course, there's going to be character development as well. So, as she gets to know um, Adam and Ronan and Gansey more, then she can also sort of alter her perception on, on the Raven boys. The Raven boys, like, overall, as people who go to that school. Unfortunately, in this book, I feel like Blue is a little bit used, like, because she's the main character and she's our introduction into, like, this setting and we're seeing through her eyes in the beginning. Like, she's the one who has access and some understanding of the magical world, so she's, like, our gateway into this sort of magical world, um, as well as, like, along with the Raven Boys. Like, it's because of her that they're being able to, like, access or they're, like, now more aware and, like, certain of these otherworldly things that do exist in the world. That was phrased oddly. 
I'm not liking the whole Blue and Adam relationship uh, currently. It's just kind of overall, only because, like, of course she's going to end up with Gansey. Like, I feel like that's an obvious thing. And I don't want Adam to be hurt. But also, I don't want their lack of romance to be, like, a cause for any sort of action that Adam takes later on. Like, if, if, if they break up, well, they're probably going to break up, but, like, if and when they break up, I don't want Adam to be like, oh my god, it's all because of Gansey, and then, like, become, like, the villain in a way, or, like, go against them, because uh, I could see that happening, and I just don't think that's necessary, and that's, like, uh, it's too much of a trope, I think, that I'm just not really a fan of, um, so I'm hoping that that doesn't happen, but I do think that Adam, I do think that Adam, he, he thankfully, in, in scenes of the book, we see him, like, take action because of who he is and, like, what his values are, and it has less to do with, although, although he's very aware of, like, the differences between him and Gansey, he, it, it's very much, like, about himself. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now I've started talking about Adam, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't mind Blue and Adam together. I just don't, I just think it unnecessarily complicates things. Uh, and I hope it doesn't further complicate things. Also, I don't even think that Adam should, like, be in a relationship right now. Like, it's just not a good time for him to be in a relationship with things that, with just other things in his life that he has going on. Specifically, like, this family, like, abusive father leaving his family and... I just think that he needs to focus on himself a bit more right now, which I'm hoping, I'm hoping he kind of, like, realizes that and notices that, like, the chemistry with Blue isn't, isn't fully there, and then they're just like, let's just be friends. I'm hoping that's what happens. Uh, yeah, but, but going back to Blue, I know that Blue Lily Lily Blue is more about her, and so I'm, I'm just... Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm gonna say I'm looking forward and I'm excited about a lot of things um, in this video. That's one of the things I'm looking forward to is getting to know Blue more, specifically in that book because I, I've heard that that, I mean, I can tell from the title as well, but it's probably gonna be more about her. And what I like most about Blue is that she is eccentric and she likes to be and she wants to be. I think she is true to herself, even if that gets in the way of what, like, she thinks about others sometimes. But again, like, there's room for character development. So now I'm moving on to Gansey, who I like especially feel like I don't know as much about. Like, I think a lot of what we know about Gansey is just based on this quest that he's on. He just wants to find Glendower and just, it's very, it surrounds that very much. It's, it's less about him and more so just with the quest and with his relationships with his friends if that made sense. Uh, but what I want to know most about Gansey is probably, like, what he wants to do with this supposed favor that Glendower would grant him if he, if the legend is true and he finds Glendower's body. Like, I just don't, I think the quest is more so just because of this, like, adventure. Like, I think that's really one of the reasons why he is doing this in the first place. Um, maybe also just to have, like, another purpose and not, not be sort of stuck with his family all the time, as well as, as well as I think he just wants to, like, see that this sort of, um, uh, magic, this, like, superhuman, supernatural things, like, these things exist. Uh, and so I think those are part of his reasoning as, as for why he's seeking Glendower, but, like, what is he gonna do with the favor? That's what I don't understand. And I'm, yeah, uh, I just have a lot of questions. <laughs> Overall, what I was trying to say there is that, like, while a lot of Gansey comes from his quest to find Glendower, a lot of it also, what we learn about him is from, comes from interactions that he has with the other characters and the relationships that he has with the other characters. Something I like about him is how he, like, thinks about what he's going to say and then, like, if he says something and then he sort of, he sort of rethinks it in his head again to make sure that he's not sounding, like, stuck up or anything like that. And then I have to mention that I feel like Gansey is, like, everyone's favorite raven boy, and he's just, like, not for me, but he's still, like, a bit of an enigma. Like, I think I, I need to understand him more and read the books 
the rest of the books of the series in order for me to like fully appreciate I do I do appreciate Gansey. What am I saying? I just he's just not my favorite, but he seems to be a lot of people's favorite. So yeah, I just don't feel that way. Uh so now I'm moving on to Adam. And I'm scrolling in my review again. I hope it doesn't look like I'm reading too much. Um not that it really matters. Uh so Adam Adam's the only character I felt a lot towards in the beginning, and then I realized that I didn't understand him, so, uh, like, unfortunately, like, towards the end of the book, I have more, like, negative feelings towards him, um, which might just be because it's such a contrast between, like, really liking him in the beginning and then, like, not liking him. Yeah, I, I still like him, but he's complicated and life is complicated, though, so I guess that makes... It shows just, like, accuracy in the writing and in the story. What I didn't realize uh, about Adam until towards the end of the book is that he has too much pride. So this kind of goes back to the way that Adam, like, his motivations are really of himself and, like, from himself. So specifically, though, I wrote that uh, it's on page 349 in this. I have, like, the hardback edition. I think there's only one, like, US slash UK edition in hardback. Is is the UK and, and US editions the same? Are they the same? I don't know. Uh, anyway, but in my edition, page 349, this went out of focus. Page 349, I on the top of that page, I wrote that uh, they all have too much pride, but in different ways. And then they being the Raven boys. Um, so I think that Adam has too much pride in having to make sure things cut, uh, like are done his way. I, I understand to an extent, like, where he's coming from, but in terms of his, like, well-being, I, I don't understand it. Like, he didn't want to leave his family, but, like, he was being beat up, and then he didn't want it to seem like he was indebted to Gansey, which I just, I don't get. Like, if, if it makes the situation better, and he's not going to be beaten to death, like, shouldn't you leave the, leave? Just leave. Especially if he didn't, like, really care about his mom, which it didn't seem to me that he cared about his family, really, at all, um, or that much. But I, I think Adam's, like, concern with money, I mean, them going to a, a private school, I think, automatically brings money into the story in a way, but I think it shows, like, the wealth of the characters are a part of their stories, and are going to be, like, a part, they're a part of them, which they're a part of the story, so it's a part of the story. <laughs> but I think that Adam is a little bitter towards Gansey and the, just, like, the privilege that Gansey has had and how Gansey may not be 100% aware of it. Uh, specifically, like, Gansey phrases things in, like, his normal way, but Adam always has to, like, point it out when it sounds like he's being stuck up, um, or specifically, there's this one part, this is, there's this one part when Adam is angry at Gansey and they're, like, they're talking about Adam leaving his family and they're having an argument about it, and then Gansey uses the word repugnant, and then Adam calls him condescending for using the word repugnant, and I'm just like, repugnant isn't even an uncommon word, and, like, Adam goes to the same school and is just as intelligent as Gansey, so, like, he can use words, he can use vocabulary and diction that seems just, like, more intelligent, I guess, less simple, uh, if he wants, he just chooses not to. And that's, like, the way that Gansey has always spoken. I don't understand why he's just so, like, put off by it. Yeah, I found it hard to empathize with Adam at parts, but I'm trying not to let that get in the way of, like, me liking him, uh, especially after things that happen towards the end of the book. And specifically, I went back and forth with Adam and Ronan as being my favorite Raven Boy character. Um, so now we we're moving on to Ronan, who is my favorite Raven Boy character. Uh, yeah, but he's like keeping so much inside, and I just I I'm so glad here. Wait, um, he's my favorite, but he's like keeping so much inside, and I'm really glad that we're gonna get to know him more. We, 
this is now us. Um, we're getting to know him more in the Dream Thieves, which uh, I'll tell you what page I'm on as of today. 57, chapter 8. Uh, so I'm really not that far into it, but I'm already learning more about him and I'm not questioning the ending of the Raven Boys anymore because I have answers. I have some answers from this, but it's still like kind of vague. Um, oh, that's something I forgot to mention about the, in, in part one about the writing is that things aren't like spelled out for us. Things aren't, you know what? We're going to come back to that point because I actually have it written in my review, but it's like later on, but I should have mentioned it in part one. That's what I'm saying. So back to Ronan. I'm glad we're learning more about him. Again, this is a wee thing now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but at the end, I was like really confused. I was like, what does that mean, Ronan? And I, I was confused when I read that last, the, the last line is like, oh, I could literally look in the book right now if I wanted to, which I'm going to. It's like, I guess now would be a good time to tell you, he said. I took Chainsaw out of my dreams. And then I, I was like, what does that even mean out of his dreams? And this church is where he was when he first saw Chainsaw. And I was just like thinking of all these things. And then I was like, I'm immediately starting the next book. Wait, the next book is called The Dream Thieves. And then I was just like piecing things together. And then I was like, Ronan has abilities? What's happening? Because um, I just wasn't expecting that. I thought that like... Blue and the psychic characters would be the only characters that had something sort of magical about them. Um, Ronin. Ronin is my favorite because, for one, I just, like, have a thing for the sort of, like, bad boy types. <laughs> like, specifically, though, with, like, fictional characters, like, a little less so in real life. <laughs> Um, so that sort of, like, drew my attention to him in the first place. But then also, like, the scenes with the scenes? The scenes with Chainsaw... Uh, I just really liked, uh, cause he's just, he's just taking care of Chainsaw. But then I was also thinking, like, I was recently thinking of this too, like after I had written my review, um, which by the way, I'll link in the description, <laughs> um, if you want to read it, uh, even though I'm mostly saying all of it. Uh, yeah, like where did Chainsaw come from specifically? Like which dream? Like where was he? And is it something like a dream that he was purposefully like going to like this place or like he wanted this to happen or was it just some random dream like is there like more significance to to chainsaw i don't know but i'm i want to know <laughs> also more like sort of like the i'm just gonna i have a lot of theories i don't know why this is representing theories but it is <laughs> so i thought just from based on like things that i had heard like, vague things that I had heard about the series beforehand, I thought that a character was gay, and then there was, like, this specific part in the book where Ronan says something that involves the word straight, or something about, like, being straight, and then I think it's Adam is like, that's the biggest lie you've ever told, and then I was like, is Ronan gay? Is Ronan gay? <laughs> like, can you tell I'm, like, here for it? But, like, it doesn't matter, because I just really like Ronan. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, is that, am I making that up? Am I, <laughs> am I just, like, hypothesizing where there's, there's nothing else? Am I, am I, I'm pretty sure I'm, like, reading too much into everything in the book, but it's fun. I like it. I hope you like my ideas and thoughts, too. Uh, yeah, so, now moving on to Noah. I knew a little bit about Noah beforehand, which actually, like, confused me a bit later on in the book. Uh, so I know, I knew that Noah is a ghost and that the scene when Declan introduces Ashley to everyone and like she shakes his hand and then she's like, your hands are so cold. And, and he's like, yeah, I've been dead for seven years and that's as warm as they get. Like, I, that made me think that everyone knew, like no one, re no one reacted to that. <laughs> So, by the way that people had talked about the other characters, the way that people talk about Ronan and Adam and Gansey, I figured, like, none of them would be the ghost. Um, so, that came down to Noah. But the way that I thought it was going to happen is that I thought that, like, Noah would be, like, alive in the first book and then, like, die in the first book or, or like, towards the end. And then he was going to be a ghost the rest of the time. But he's a ghost the whole time. So, then when he said that, I was like, oh, oh my god, he's a ghost right now. And then nobody said anything afterwards, so I just thought they all knew that he was a ghost. 
<laughs> but he's like they didn't know that he was a ghost. So they didn't know he was a ghost. But then like when he when he said that he's been dead for seven years, then I just pictured him the whole the whole book like just like floating around like on a quest of, with the Raven Boys, like picturing him like a little bit more translucent. And uh, no, no, apparently he like really looks like a human. Uh, an alive human <laughs> in full 3D form. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, why did no one ever, like, question other things about Noah? But, I mean, I guess <laughs> at least they found out eventually that he's a ghost. Um, but then, like, also, Gansey got really upset, and I was, like, kind of questioning, like, why was he so upset that Noah, like, Noah's dead, and you're gonna be mad at him? Anyway, um, yeah, I guess that they just thought he was being, like, sarcastic about it, which I think is funny. I just, like, didn't even pick up on it. Is it... Was that supposed to be sarcasm when he's like, yeah, I've been dead for seven years? I don't know. But then when Gansey was mad at him, like, Noah kept disappearing, and I didn't like that because it, like, made me sad because Noah was sad, and Noah has such an innocence. Noah, I love his, uh like, relationship and sort of, like, admiration for, I would even say, and, like, loyalty to Blue. Also, you know what? I'm probably gonna do a part three of this. I'm gonna talk about all the Raven Boys in this book, <laughs> in this book, in this video, and then I'll talk about the more psychic characters in the next book. <laughs> in the- why do I keep saying that? In the next video. <laughs> okay, because this is just gonna be really long. I just really like this book and I have a lot to say, okay? Uh, the last thing I want to mention about Noah is that I hope that we get, like, a full picture of the day that Noah was murdered. Like, because it, it seems to me that their relationship, that their friendship was, like, real and it, his death really was somehow overall an accident. Uh, and so I just... I hope there's some sort of flashback or a full explanation of, of what happened, um, especially now that, like, Barrington is dead and Noah's the only person who could really say anything. I'm, I'm assuming that Barrington is not going to be in the series anymore. Like, he's not going to come back or anything like that. Like, he's dead. So, a side note in my review is, throughout the book, I repeatedly called each of the Raven Boys baby, but not in a nickname way, more in a I love them and need them to be protected way. They're so precious, even if Ronan doesn't want that to be seen. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so, now, the last person in this video that I'm going to talk about is Barrington, and then the rest, uh, part three, I guess, will be, like, the psychics, and then a couple other characters, and then, like, a, maybe a couple other things. As long as I don't have to do a part four. <laughs> so, Barrington, he made me angry at times, be, um, even though I like that we get to know him more, like, as a character, like, before he's officially declared as, like, the bad guy. Um, like, we're able to understand his point of view, even though I have a different point of view, and it was really hard to, like, go along with what he was saying and doing, which is understandable because he's supposed to be, like, the bad guy. Um, because the problem that I had with his point of view is that I was, like, hard, it, it was hard to, like, go along with his opinion of things and, like, the way that he was interpreting, th I just, <sighs> first of all, he completely dismisses anything about Gansey and the other boys because, like, he assumes they're all like he was when he wa was at that school. And, like, he thinks of them as the way that Blue initially did. And uh, he thinks of them all, especially Gansey, as, like, rich boys who can have whatever they want, whenever they want, until it's all taken away from him them like it was with him. And uh, it's, like, it's just, like, turned him into this bitter guy and... He's, like, still super stuck up. And then, like, what did he want to do with the power of the ley lines exactly? Like, he wanted the power, but what was he going to do with it? Like, what was his end goal? What was he going to do? Um, there was, like, this specific part towards, towards the end where, or I think it was towards the end. I don't know. But it was just, like, he was... Oh, he was talking about, like, having the powers of the ley lines. And then he was, like... It just made it seem like he was trying to prove to the boys at Agley and B that, like, he's the best Agley and B boy and, like, he's the one that they should be looking up to. And I was just like, move on. Like, why are you, why are you caring what high school boys are thinking? Like, go, like, move. You should just move because that will probably be better for you 
if you just kind of go away. <laughs> just go away. I mean, he's dead now, but okay, he, he went away then. And a side note about Barrington. So, there was that scene where the guy uh, came to see the psychics and, like, have a reading, and I thought that it was, like, Barrington, but then it never actually, like, confirmed that it was him, I'm pretty sure, and I would have thought that, like, especially because Mara was, like, Blue, if you ever see that man again, like, run away, like, Blue didn't have a reaction to him, like, he didn't, she didn't recognize him when she encountered him again, which I thought would be part of the story when they were to see each other. Um, because of what her mom said. Like, there was no recognition there. She didn't... There wasn't any part of the narration that was like, Blue recognized him as the man who came to get his his reading done or get a reading done or whatever. There was nothing like that. And so then I was like, was it really Barrington or was it somebody else? And now, now, now I'm thinking that it's the, the, gray, the gray man in the dream themes. Like, that's who I'm thinking... Who I am thinking <laughs> it is. Um... Yeah, I have a lot of questions about the gray man, but I can't get into that. That would be in in almost fell. Um that that would be in my review of of the dream thieves. So, <laughs> this was so long, but I I just love the Raven boys and I love the Raven cycle so far. I I can't why am I saying that I love the entire series when I've only read one book out of the four? So, the Raven boys. That was some of the characters and <laughs> some of my thoughts on the book part two. And now we're going to have a part three, uh, going more into the psychic characters and some other, just other random thoughts that I had and certain plot points, I guess. Um, and then any other sort of characters that I didn't mention. I know I didn't mention Declan and like Ashley. I don't know if Ashley's going to be part of it anymore or if she was just like in that first scene. Um, Yes. <laughs> if you watch the whole thing, thank you so much. And I really hope you watch part three because I love the psychics. Uh, I have, I just, mm, say, I'll save it. <laughs> I'll save these, like, I don't even know how to speak right now thoughts for part three. So yeah, look forward to that. Uh, look forward to part three. And I, I hope you have watched part one watch that. Uh, so thank you for watching this, and I will see you in part three. Bye.